introducing Dr. Jackery Damage. Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Damage. We are coming to you from the greatest city in the world, New York City. Yes, yes, yes. New York City is so great that we have forced our governor, Governor Andrew Cuomo, to resign. Hey, hey. Take a look. This morning, Andrew Cuomo, New York's politically pugnacious governor, calling it quits after an investigation by the state attorney general documented multiple sexual harassment allegations made by 11 women. Yes, I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> Is that even possible? His own attorney general investigated him and found him guilty of the charges. Think about it. It's like saying that uh, Nigeria's Attorney General, Abu Bakr Malami, investigated President Muhammadu Buhari for, pick anyone, nepotism, failure to protect lives and properties of Nigerians, for paying a ghost worker named Aisha Buhari, or any of the 1,001 charges against him. You know? Now, on that threat of impeachment by the New York Senate and the House of Representatives, Governor Como resigned. Now, now, here is the main line of Governor Como's uh, resignation speech. Watch. I think that given the circumstances, the best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. And therefore, that's what I'll do. Amazing. That's it. Just that line, the man is gone. Like that. Why is it difficult for President Mohamedou Buhari of Nigeria to make a speech like that? Why? Why is it difficult for President Ali, Ali Bongo of Gabon to make a speech like that? Look at, look at him. <laughs> Disgrace in Africa. So, anyway, Cuomo is gone. And New York State will get its first female governor. Yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Here is the incoming New York governor. Watch. And I'm confident they'll see that I fight like hell every single day. It's how I'm hardwired, and I'm looking forward to this challenge, and I won't let New Yorkers down. I know. The game has changed. Talking about incoming and outgoing politicians, for the first time in the history of the world, the outgoing president of Nigeria, Mr. Mohamedou Buhari, and the incoming president of Nigeria, Mr. Bola Tinubu, they were in London at the same time last week. Oh, yes, look at them. <laughs> one is on um, walking stick. <laughs> the other one is uh, holding up. Now, now, they were each in London receiving treatments for some unknown illnesses in two different uh, unknown hospitals. <laughs> All we know is that their illnesses are associated with um, old age, hypocrisy, and the lack of cell contentment. They are not contented. Sasha, tweet that out. Now, on our show today, we will take a look at the wedding pictures of President Muhammadu Buhari's uh, son. No, no, by that I mean, I mean the picture of Buhari's uh, daughter-in-law and why Hishba police banned everybody from posting it on social media. <laughs> we will also analyze the final interview of the evil genius, General Ibrahim Babangida. Ah, who wrote this crap? How do you know it's the final interview? Second to the final? How do you know? Nobody, nobody will want to hear from him again. Anyway, anyway, in the interview, the evil dummy, <laughs> that's, that's what he is, marshaled out the qualities of a president that he believes that Nigeria needs in 2023. My first reaction was, who asked you, IBV? Who asked you? Yeah? We will find out what or if he revealed how he sent um, the letter, the letter bomb to, to Delegate One. We'll find out. Watch him. Who take advantage of what we are trying to do will succeed in life. But those who can't will go under. <laughs> yes, IBB. But, but, but when we come back, we will first present to you the greatest news of the year. Yes. A man who now receives $1 million, a lot, every week, $1 million. No profit anywhere in the world saw it coming. And, and they were all watching him every weekend. Nonsense. We'll be right back. Oh, <laughs> Messi, Messi, Messi. Messi moves to PSG. Yes, imagine 
the Afghan president moving out of Kabul. Oh, that has happened. Uh, imagine Coca-Cola moving out of Atlanta, Georgia. Or, or imagine the shrine that made Chris Ngige, who he is today, moving out of Okija. <laughs> yes, it is that big. Messi left Barcelona. I know, I know. It was so big that it turned everything on earth upside down. Watch. <laughs> I told you, I told you, when something that big happens in Europe, you see the signs everywhere. I didn't know what was going on until I attended our Holy Adoration Ground Church. Here is the sermon for the day. Take a look. Kitas was in a contract in Shweziike. They can't maintain him. Ha, 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 ha. No, 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 no. Initially, I thought Fadambaka was talking about Buhari and APC and what they did to Bola Tinubu, you know, used him and dumped him in London with a walking stick. That was what I thought he was talking about. Then he said this. Watch. The same goodness. That was how I found out that Messi left Barcelona. Now, the moment... The moment Messi signed with PSG, the number of people following the French football club jumped on Instagram, jumped from 10 million to 40 million in 24 hours. And guess what? Over 1 million of their kids, the T-shirt and everything, Jesse of Messi, were sold in 24 hours, generating 90 mil million euros for the club. 90 million. Can you believe that? Messi will make $1 million a week for the next two years playing for PSG. Even JJ Okocha was impressed. <laughs> Here is his reaction. <laughs> Our JJ said that he came too early. You know what I mean? He wished that this is the time he's playing. Even in conservative northern Nigeria, Messi's move was so well received by these ladies. Watch them. I'm like, what? <laughs> Which with um, Hishba police watching, the lady was dancing that way. Imagine, imagine what she would have done without Hishba police looking around and watching what's going on. Kafune fune diutua. Fune fune. Now, let's go to the evil genius himself, Ibrahim Babangida. I think we give him too much credit when we call him the evil genius. If you think about it deeply, you know, the rotten legacy he left behind, he's actually an evil dummy, if you ask me. Yes, I said it. He's an evil dummy. After years of acting as the top dog in Nigeria, what is his final scorecard? What is it? Look at him. Look at him. He still goes to Germany for medical treatment. He now lives a few miles away from the war front of bandits and Boko Haram fighters. His Niger state could fall to bandits any time from now. And Babagida will run to Ondo state, just like the president of Afghanistan. <laughs> he will run. Anyway, let's start the story from the very beginning. So the evil dummy, Ibrahim Babangida, turned 80 years the other day. Oh, yes. To mark the occasion, he granted a Rise TV, an exclusive interview. I wasted one hour of my life watching it so that <laughs> you don't have to do that. You don't have to waste your time. Here is the highlights of the interview. The first tough question for Babangida was, how do you feel knowing that Delegiwa is not with us today because of you? Here is the answer. I feel good. The 1991 Gulf oil windfall of 12 point something nine billion dollars. Where did you hide the money? And were you happy that you stole that money? Tough question. What's his answer? I think I'm grateful to God. <laughs> of course, I was just kidding. Arise TV's reporter did not ask uh, uh, about Delegiwa or about the 12 point something billion dollars Gulf war oil windfall that's pious 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 Okibo report 
said that Babangida could not account for. They didn't ask that question. But she asked them um, about other third, third class things, you know, like what antecedent must a person have to rule Nigeria? <laughs> I know, I know. My reaction was, what makes Babangida a go-to person to determine that? What? Watch Babangida's reaction. If he doesn't believe in Nigeria, we wouldn't look for him at all. Ha ha ha. Oops. That means that Bola Tinubu is disqualified. <laughs> Tinubu said this, you know, look at, look at the headline. Yeah, that he does not believe in one Nigeria. He's, I know, I know that was before he took ownership of 10% of all the Lagos assets. But he said it. His qualifications, his beliefs should be known to Nigerians before somebody ever throws his hat into the... Into the ring. Into the ring. Oops! Again, again, again. <laughs> this is a job at Tinubu. <laughs> his Tinubu certificate, we know, is suspect. That, that is an English way of saying that yeah, um, you know, he doesn't have any, or it's not real, or something like that. You know, or that his real name is not on it. Anyway, um, let us get back to uh, um, uh, Babangida. I, I have started visualizing a good Nigerian leader. Exactly. Who is that? <laughs> good question. I have seen one or two or three already. Really? Get out of here, man. Get out of here, Prophet Odumeje. Prophet Babangida is on the stage. Young, middle-aged, elderly. 60s. In their 60s? Yeah. Damn! That knocks out Bola Tinubu and Abuba Katiku. One blow, seven apples. Now, about Buhari's effort to intimidate the media. Here is Babangida's answer. Mind you, mind you, when this man Babangida was president, he was closing down newspaper houses. Anyhow, but now he's uh, an advocate. Watch him. The media and the public will not allow that to happen. So it is even silly to start to think of clipping them. <laughs> I know. Now, about, the, his, uh, about uh, Babangida's annulment of the June 12th election that MK Abiola won, Ngozi asked IBB if it was true that a cabal had a gun on his head and forced him to annul the election. <laughs> she got IBB there. <laughs> Here is why I said that she did. Watch. You want me to be honest with you? Yes. <laughs> you want me to be honest with you? When, when a man says that, does it mean that everything he's been saying, he wasn't honest before that? You know, or is, that, is that what it means? Let's, let's watch him. If it materialized, there would have been a coup d'etat, which could have been violent. That's all I can confirm. <laughs> Get out of here, man! In Igbo, see about poor. So, 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 what is wrong with having a violent coup? Tell me. It wouldn't be the first time it happened in Nigeria. What would be the worst thing that could happen? Let's see. Abiola will have been killed. Okay. Abacha will have been killed. What else? Ooh, Babangida will have been killed too. So it was all about saving uh, Babangida's behind. That, that's the deal. Now, <laughs> let's listen to him explain further. He tried. <laughs> Watch him. It didn't happen. Thanks to the engineering, the maradonic way we handled you guys in the, in the society. Yes. Did you hear what the man said? <laughs> the Maradonic way he handled you people in the society. Chai! We don't suffer for that country. We don't suffer. Now, at this point, there was nothing else to ask the man but this. Are you still the evil genius? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, she got it. Are you still the evil genius? Or have you realized that despite all your gara gara, history will remember you? As an evil dummy who scored own goal and wasted nine years of the life of 12, uh, what am I saying, 120 million Nigerians? <laughs> that should have been the full question, but you know, we pardon her the way she framed it. 
Are you still the evil genius? <laughs> did you call yourself that? No, I never oh, did. The media did. Okay, and people call you Maradona. What was that all about? Why? Yes. <laughs> What's up with that? I mean, That's a very good thing about the Nigerian media. Even they call me evil. I, I marvel at that. Uh, I said there is a contradiction. You can't be evil and then a genius. <laughs> exactly. And that is why we think that you graduated from evil genius to evil dummy. You sacrificed democracy, sacrificed Nigeria to save your behind. And in the end, history remember you as a wimp who thought himself a hero. An evil dummy who believed himself an evil genius. Sasha! <laughs> Tweet that out. <laughs> Nonsense. This is something that we call preventative medicine. It's brought to you by the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, OSIWA. The wife of former Nigeria's president, uh, Shehu Shagari, was among those who died recently after battling COVID-19 at the isolation center in Abuja. The other day, we sent our crack reporters to Ihela to speak to church goers on Mother's Day. We asked them how they have coped with COVID-19 pandemic. Watch. As you can see, I'm putting on my own face mask. Okay. Which indicates that this church is also observing the, the, the social distance and all the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic rules and regulations. Okay. We say that we should abstain, like we should maintain social distance and wear our um, face mask. Okay. Are going to. Okay. As you can see, I'm doing my own, which means this church is observing it. We also asked them if COVID-19 was real thing to them. What's your reaction? Uh, to me, I've not seen anybody because if coronavirus is real, I've seen somebody. Okay. I've shown us the door. Uh, okay. But I've not seen. I had, but I've not seen. And I know that in this office, there's nothing like coronavirus. Okay, there's nothing like coronavirus. Okay. All these face masks that you people are putting, uh, is it for just ordinary to escape from police I people? I say that or? prevention is better than curing. Okay. We are just preventing it. Okay. Uh, yes. I cannot say that when it comes to the next day, whatever, it's not real. I cannot say it because we have heard a series of news, the number of people, the, the virus are killed and the other people. So I cannot say that it is not real. It is real, if I were to say. But I cannot give you 100% assurance because I have not seen anyone killed by COVID-19. Rather, I have heard. So okay. I cannot say that I'm 100% sure. Okay. But from the news and other, other news, from the news so far, I can say that it is real. Since mothers run the family, if mothers do not sign up, most likely the whole family won't. So what precautions have they been taking? We say that prevention is better than curing. Okay. We are just preventing it. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, actually, oh, okay. Maybe the other side. Here we normally keep a bucket of water okay. and hand sanitizer. Okay. Before you enter inside the church, you just wash your hand and use this sanitizer to sanitize your hand before going inside. And like I just told you, some people also observe the protocol, the, the, the rule of wearing their face mask. And the most important question if they will take COVID-19 vaccine, if it were made available to them. Listen to them. Um, well, yeah, as you can see, I'm putting on my face mask because I don't want the, the virus to escalate in okay. this community. And because okay. I don't want it to escalate, I will not, I will try to apply all the measures it takes okay. to make sure that we stop the problem. And when the Bible said something about six issues, it gave us um, some things that when we see them, we know that um, um, CCC is at hand or the mark of CCC or whatever. Coronavirus is so stubborn that we need to remain cautious. In the meantime, wear your mask, wash your hands, maintain social distance, follow health officials' guidelines, and stay safe. Only those who made it alive at the other side of the pandemic will get the chance to tell the stories. Now, by the time you watch this, Twitter will have 
been back in Nigeria. That is if Lai Mohammed was telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Buhari's government calmed down after the U.S. official in Nigeria said this. Watch. The uh, Nigerian government's ongoing suspension of Twitter and the stated intent to reintroduce registration requirements for other social media platforms is deeply worrisome to us and to others around the world. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah. That was, that was a loaded statement. It is not a proverb, but it is as heavy as a proverb, if you know what I mean. Listen to her. Banning or significantly restricting social media, including under threat of prosecution, undermines Nigerians' human rights and fundamental freedoms. Yeah. That is exactly what <laughs> we have been saying, you know. Guess what? A few days after the U.S. Consul General said that, Lai Mohammed came out with this reaction. Watch. I will hope in a few weeks time or a few days time we should be able to reach an agreement uh, with, uh, with Twitter. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, behind the scene, someone twisted the fingers of another person. You know what I mean? If you want the rest of those your military attack helicopters that you love so much, better make a deal with Twitter. <laughs> if you don't, we can remotely demobilize even the ones that you have already. <laughs> Chai! You get it? Shubo? <laughs> it is it's probably the same kind of um, conversation that happened with the Abakieri's uh, case. Despite the threat from Ariwayut, from Mietiala, you know, the man is gone. <laughs> In fact, now that he's down, more stories are coming out on how he and his team uh, were extorting Nigerians. Here is one of them from Sahara Reporters. Take a look at the headline. Yes! How disgraced Abakieri's police team extorted one million each from suspected IPOB members. Yes! I hope the man's uh, fashion business is sustaining him. As for his rich friends, I'm sure that they are wise enough to know that the FBI will be tracking any attempt to transfer money to the man. But again, you know, knowing who Abakiari is, you know, he will have um, accounts, different account numbers from mechanics, from dry cleaners, <laughs> to use for such transactions. Bad sons. How did we go from Twitter to this uh, Abakiari thing? I, I, don't, I don't understand anymore. They, they make me go crazy. The perfect residence is an estate located within Beachwood Estate, Lakue, Lagos. The estate has 24-hour light, 24-hour security, and 24-hour water supply, an artificial lake, good drainage, and a central sewage system. Live Card Company is introducing Spring Island. Yes! Spring Island is a beautiful waterfront estate with lots of amenities and proposed access to a mini jetty where you can use a speedboat to equip if you don't want to use the access road. In its neighborhood, it has the Lakwe Lakes, the Lakwe Golf Courts, Omu Resort, Green Spring British School. In just three months, the land has appreciated by as much as 20% at perfect residence, a 450 square meter land is now 14.5 million. A 600 square meter land is now 19.3 million. At Spring Island, a 300 square meter land has changed from 6.6 .6 million to 7.9 million. A 450 square meter land moved from 9.9 .9 million to 11.9 million. Meanwhile, 600 square meters of land appreciated from 13.2 million to now 15.8 million. Those who made the purchases, they tell me that they are very satisfied with the professional services that they received. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? To sign up and make a request, visit the website of Lifeguard Company Nigeria. You can reach Grace of Ray directly at her email address, graceofrayzone at gmail.com and mention Dr. Damages as your coupon and you will get 5% discount because you mentioned my name. And let me know how it went, okay? Now, for years, Nigerians abroad have been maltreated. Oh yeah, the government of Nigeria has done nothing, virtually nothing significant to stop it. Now, it is more rampant in Asian countries. Last week, it was the turn of the, a Nigerian diplomat in Indonesia. 
Take a look. I can't breathe. My neck. My neck. I know. Unbelievable. Watch more. See, see, whatever the man did, he did not deserve this kind of treatment. Not even American police are currently allowed to treat black people this way. This way. Abba, abba. The scandal was so huge that Nigeria's Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Godfrey Onyama, had to say something. I've never heard the man speak, you know, but he came out watching. So what we have decided to do uh, is to recall for consultations uh, 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 immediately, our Nigerian uh, ambassador in uh, Jakarta, in Indonesia. Yes, here is his response to Indonesia's security people beating up a Nigerian diplomat. Watch him. And, um, and decide what uh, next steps to take, including a review, of course, uh, of our relations with, uh, with Indonesia. Get out of here, man. We can do that. Wait. Eh? Was it because he was a diplomat? Why don't we back like this? Whoa, whoa. Like this when ordinary Nigerians are maltreated by other countries everywhere in the world. Why? Watch. We have also requested the Indonesian government to take severe and appropriate sanctions against the immigration officials that were involved in this act of criminality. Wow. You know, you know, one day we may get to that point. We may get to that place when Nigeria will begin to act like a, the giant of Africa. But until then, <laughs> even our masquerades have lost it. Watch. <laughs> And you wonder why everything is upside down. Even our ancestors cannot stand what is going on in our land today. They can't. <sighs> now, this is something that we call Secret Serve. Now, it's based on the premise that a picture is worth more than a thousand words. Word. Yeah, Secret Serve Pictures is brought to you by Travel Documents. The most common complaint that I get in emails is the challenges Nigerians face when they want to renew their passports or obtain travel documents from our embassies and consulates worldwide. The frustration is legendary. Well, if you live in the US or Canada, help is just a phone call away. The people of Travel Document Express are here to help. They will process passport renewal and new applications for you. They will also help you with visa applications, business and tourist visas, and expatriates work permits. Do you need travel certificates? They will help you get that to capital. They can also help you get your airline tickets to all African destinations. Here is the number to call for assistance, 713 429-7305. Let me know. Tell them Dr. Damage sent you. Now, now the picture you're looking at is that of Muhammadu Buhari's son's wife. Hey! Yes! She is the daughter of the Emir of uh, uh, Bichi uh, in Kano State, Emir Bayero. Now, 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 sharing this picture on social media has been banned. <laughs> you, are, you are lucky that I have it. <laughs> the great moral police of Kano, the Hishba, banned such an act. It is considered a sin to look at the picture or share it. <laughs> now, now, if not that Hishba police had um, come into the 21st century, they would have plucked out the eyes of all those who already saw the lady's picture. Don't, don't even let me tell you what they would have done if those were the, the olden days, to those who save the picture uh, on their phones. Oh, I don't want to tell you that. <laughs> I know, I know. This is how ridiculous laws are in so many African countries. No, 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 no. They are not talking about uh, the woman. They are not taking issues with the woman who chose to dress that way. No, 
The people that are crazy are those who are sharing it and putting the picture under their pillows. I bet you, if this woman were, weren't the daughter of an important emir, the Sharia law police would have descended on her. You know, when we poor people understand this hypocrisy and revolt, the same thing happened when the daughter of Nuhu Ribadu, remember him, the EFCC, former EFCC guy, yeah, married the son of Abu Bakr Tiku. Oh, yeah, the Hishba police did not they look question these people, yeah, but if they are poor people, there will be trouble. It's not just a northern Nigerian thing. Remember when the son of the general overseer of the deeper life got married? Oh, his wife was dressed like. Yeah, like, like, you know what? Show them the picture. <laughs> now, if you know anything about deeper life, you will know that that picture showed nothing like deeper life. In fact, it's, it's what they call shallow life. <laughs> it happened, the daughter of the general overseer. No, no, the daughter-in-law. The daughter-in-law of the general overseer. Deeper life. Can you imagine that? Bad daughters and bad sons <laughs> everywhere. Okay, so here are some stories making headline news across Nigerian newspapers this week. As always, headline news is brought to you by Help Me Waka. Help Me Waka, the people who run errands for you in Nigeria and in Ghana. When was the last time you sent something to your people? Don't you hear that things are bad? Things are bad at home. Inflation high. When was the last time you do something? Come on, come on. Call Help Me Waka. Go and check, check the website. <laughs> You must the images. I hereby sentence you to 12 months in prison with hard labor for neglecting your family and especially your father who, who did every, every, everything to, to, to get you where you are today. No, 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 no. Daddy, wake up. I had a terrible nightmare. A judge sentenced me to prison for neglecting grandpa. Did you not give him food items? I'm a busy doctor. In that case, nto. Uh, if I catch you, eh? Daddy, it's very easy. Go to helpmewaka.com, choose any food item anywhere in Nigeria or Ghana. Gary, chicken, rice, yam, anything you want. I will do just that. You better, because next time it'll be your village people that come for you. I, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. See, si. Nego do. Uh, yeah. Oh, the first story is amazing. Talibans enter the Afghan presidential palace. And the president psh, took off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so many armed groups across the world are dreaming of a day like this when they will enter their respective presidential palaces and watch their president take off. <laughs> I won't call names. I won't call names. But, but I can tell you this, that so many presidents are having sleepless nights these days due to this development. You know, I can tell you this much. The bandits... The, and then the Boko Haram people, members, uh, they are salivating today. They are looking at two and they are saying, oh, this could be us. Ooh. Next. All right. Ah, Messi leaves Barcelona and signs with PSG for $1 million a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. $1 million. My friend, my friend, stop converting the money to your local currency. Even if, even if, even if it is 1 billion shillings a week, eh, what are you going to do? You cannot even go to his DM and beg him for money to feed your four children or pay your school fees. You can't. Sorry. You can't. That is why God made Tonto DK. <laughs> if you need that, go to Tonto DK. Not, not messy. Next. One million a week. Damn. Uh -huh. <laughs> Former president amongst war criminals to be extradited to ICC. Wait, 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 get out of here, man. Don't, 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 tell, don't tell me that Yakubu Gowan is finally going to the Hague. No? Don't tell me that Yakubu Gowan is finally going to the Hague. No? Oh, it's not even the Nigerian war criminals that they are talking about. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, they were talking about the Sudanese, uh, what's his name? Al, Al, Al Shaba, Al, Al Bashir. Yes. But, but, but God, when? Eh? When time is running out, IBB just turned 50 years. How old is going? Eh? God, when? God, when? That's how we say it in Nigeria. God, when? Next. Oh, this is big news. Tinubu has no certificate, steals 
huge amount of money of Lagos money monthly, says Bode George. Look at the headline. Now, now let me let me tell you. I think when Bode George talks, you all should pay attention. Listen to him. Unlike Tinubu, Bode George is actually from Lagos, and not people like Tinubu who sneaked into Lagos, changed their names to fit in. No. And when it comes to stealing, Bode George has a degree in it. Unlike Tinubu, he served time for stealing, so he knows his colleagues, and he's interested in making sure that his colleagues in stealing. Uh, also go and serve their time, you know? <laughs> Next. Oh. <laughs> this is wonderful, unbelievable. Nigerian Army releases 102 of 112 Obibo residents illegally detained since November of last year, 2020. Can you believe that? Since November of last year, 102, 102, 102 of them were still alive. Four of them were dead, while six others were still unaccounted for. These are human beings, children of somebody. According to the civil group, civil rights group, International Society for Civil Liberties and the Rule of Law, the families and the lawyers of most of the victims had not, quote unquote, not been allowed to see them till death. And neither have they been charged to court or given any fair trial or hearing, nothing. Meanwhile, Boko Haram members who were picked up when um, the same people were picked up last year, they are now studying in Sudan and in London, you know, on government scholarship or whatever, because they are repentant Boko Haram members. Nonsense. Next. Oh, oh this is unbelievable. Another, only in Nigeria. Adam, our businessman, gets 30 months in jail for calling the governor of Adam, our father of all thieves. <laughs> I don't know what I'm, why I'm laughing. I am, I'm shocked. Really, I'm shocked. Inside, I'm shocked. <laughs> the man did not walk up to the governor and say, you are the father of all thieves, which will be okay. He just wrote it on his Facebook page. Now, moving forward, the governor said, listen, everybody, anyone who calls him the father of all thieves, even in their dreams, will also go to jail. Hey, no more play, play. Control what you dream about. Control that. That's what they, the message is. <laughs> Imagine that. Only in Nigeria. Next. Oh, this is unbelievable. Strike. Nigerian doctors must stop competing with God, says <laughs> Labor Minister Chris Ngige. I know, I know. Ngige is a doctor, but I don't get it. I don't get it. If you deliver babies and pronounce people dead, who should you compete with if not God? I think Ngige is still suffering from some of those things left behind after he, he went to take a note in Okija Shrine. I think that's what's going on with him. Otherwise, he will understand that. He's a doctor, just like me. Now, <laughs> that's all the time we have. Please keep following us on Twitter at Dr. Damages. And on Instagram at Dr. Damages. And on Facebook at Dr. Damages. You can also uh, support us by going to patreon.com slash Dr. Damages. Any amount that you can give will be of help to us to keep producing this show. After 10 years, help us. Now, here's my concern for today. It's taken from page 419 of the book Friendship 101 by Walter Winshell. And it says, a real friend is one who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. Ah, it's been a long day. Until next week, I'm Dr. Damages. I diagnose. Yeah. Our battery is dying back and forth, so that's why I don't know what's going on. Some people are, maybe it's supposed to Suleiman. <laughs> Yes, if you don't know who to blame, blame Buhari, Apostle Suleiman, and this uh, lawmaker from Lagos State. Who, who was his name? Desmond. Yes, Elliot. Blame them. They are the cause of the problems. Anyway, it's nice seeing you. Thank you for subscribing. Yeah, yeah, you. Thank you so much. Have you subscribed? Are you still waiting for me to beg you? I will beg. Please, please subscribe. Click the button. Click the button.